we're trying to find here, the iliac crest. So you come in, now, we all have a dominant eye, all right? And you can, you can figure out, you can go onto Google, no, but looking at your dominant eye, mine's my left. It's the one you'd put in a viewfinder if you had a uh, SLR camera. Or an another way of actually trying to figure it out is if I point to a spot over there, the red, the red little button on the, on the treadmill. I've got both my eyes open, I'm pointing right to the middle. Now, if I shut my left eye and I keep my right open, my finger shifts. It's not pointing to the red, anymore, red uh, button anymore. When I shut my right eye and keep my left open, it's still pointing at the red button. That's my dominant eye. That stops as much error as possible. So I always line myself up with my left eye in the middle of the body when I'm assessing. So, someone can be standing here, bare feet. You don't want shoes on or anything like we want bare feet. We want them to actually have a bit of a look at their feet. Are they over prone one more externally rotating the other? But that gives us an indication of a few things as well, but that, that's Lockie's territory. And it does get complex because the feet are super complex. Now, we come down here, thumbs. Fingers, it doesn't matter, we're sliding in on here. So with your client, it can be a quite tender area. It can be a ticklish area. So you have to let them know what you're doing. And you have to get consent. Now for us, people sort of expect to have to disrobe a little bit. I generally just tuck a uh, shirt up under the bra for women or shirt off for guys. Come in here, and that's what you're looking at. And I've used my left eye to be in the middle here. Now, Kelly, they've got him pretty straight. I'd be pretty happy if he came in here. And if I look down the spine here, in general, okay, he's not perfect either, but in general, it's nice and straight. He could have quite a scoliotic curve. If you can come in and you can explain this to people, if you can get a mirror, we've got some big mirrors that we get people in front of, and we can put the fingers in and they can actually see it. Now they're gonna have a bit of error because they're looking down it, but they can actually see that. They're gonna go, wow, I had no idea. Sometimes when that works out, you see one arm's resting on the side of the body. You're going to see this with Carla in a moment. And one arm's sitting right up to the side of this. And I go, oh my goodness, and they've got a big, big curve in here and a straight side down here. Basically, you're going to see a lot of things. And it'll, they probably haven't even noticed it before. They're staring at themselves every morning getting ready and had no idea that they've had hip dysfunction, hip imbalances. Now, the other thing is you can always ask them, does your skirt ride around? Do your shorts ride around? Do you find one strap falling off of a shoulder? Do you find, yeah, all these different things. Often they know, oh yeah, I've never not realized why that happened. But you'll see it time and time again. It's a great way to show them that they've got dysfunction. Now, stretching, strength night is brilliant. However, you need to get to the cause of that dysfunction to get the best results using other exercise and fitness modalities. The other thing is you want to check your hip height. You want to hit, check the hip height standing and you want to check it sitting because we take the legs in and out of the equation. I won't complicate it too much, but if the hips are uneven standing, do not expect to see the same when you sit. It could be, or when the client sits. It could be the same, but in many cases, it's not. Okay, let's get your client sitting on the edge of the table. Now, if they're sitting on the edge of the table here, feet, weight off the feet, we don't want the feet coming into the equation here, all the weights on the, sitting bones, but you're going to see very often one ilium, same way you test it like I did before when I'm standing, you're going to see the ilium like this, or like this, sometimes four or five centimetres. That's dramatic. That's as bad as you're going to ever see. The 12th rib is only up here. You'll see sometimes the 12th rib squished against the ilium. Uh, but they don't even know. Most clients have no idea. Now, the body's smart. It's not going to sit with the spine over here. It's going to Bend it back. It's going to be subconsciously contracting muscles all over the place to bring the head back and the shoulders back to as even as possible and the eyes to even. It's always trying to do that. Now, in this position here, think about sitting for hour on hour at a desk job, what that's going to do to these joints. And if you understand the mechanics of the sacrum, it's a remarkable bone. When you sit, you actually load it by making it move back towards you. Okay, there's all these fancy words, but, it's, but essentially, as you bend and sit down, this bone actually comes back. Now, if it comes back and it gets twisted like that, you're going to have a lot of pain here. And then potentially issues through the sacrum, the piriformis, pain down the leg, pain in the butt. You'd know, people talk about, oh, I drive for too long and I get a pain in my backside or down my leg and I have to stop and get out of the car. All these sort of things. This can be squared up really easily. And the thing about the sitting position is, we've taken the legs out of the equation leg length can't come into it. So if you see 
hip height imbalances, scoliosis, S-bending the spine sitting, aside from congenital scoliosis, you've got muscle dysfunction, you've got joint dysfunction that can be fixed. Standing's a little bit more complicated, but it can be fixed.